Hi, this is Jason from Horrific Nightmares, and welcome back to another Wild Eye Wednesday. Now today I wanted to take a look at The Whispering Man. But before I get into my review, I wanted to take the time to thank Wild Eye for sending me this copy to review for you guys. They have an awesome company. They are definitely where it's at with independent horror. I'm going to put their links to their YouTube channel and their official website in the description box below. Definitely check them out. Now, The Whispering Man is a 2019 film, which runs approximately 74 minutes, and is directed by Joseph Gallier. Now, he was responsible for Moth, Bodum, and Spirits in the Dark. Now, this stars David Fex as Mark. He was in Curtis and Gorilla, and also some TV. Andreas... Horsamaros as Tommy. He was in some TV and a few shorts. And Agoda Dunai as Dora. She was in The Shepherd, K-12, and Spirits in the Dark. Now this was also called The Surreal Project. And it was filmed in Hungary, UK, and the USA. And the budget was about $7,000. It was filmed between in four days. And it says it takes place between 2003 and 2019. Which, I guess, what they're saying by that, when I get into the story... I guess I can tell, say that when I get into the story. Okay. Now, this tells the story of Mark and Tommy, who are both brothers. Now, Mark has a YouTube channel, which is a kind of like a scare channel, where he tries to uncover some of the paranormal things and debunk them and all that kind of stuff. Well, he decides to take on a new project that has personal meaning to him. Apparently, his grandmother had passed away a few days prior to filming this segment for his YouTube channel. This is all found footage, by the way, if you couldn't tell. Now, he tells the story of The Whispering Man. Now, The Whispering Man is a painting that the grandmother had in her attic that was once taken by the father. He Something happened to him, and he went missing and kind of changed in personality. And strange occurrences happened with her husband, of course, the grandfather, and he ended up passing away. So he thinks that there's something to this Whispering Man painting. So he goes to his grandmother's old house in order to, you know, pack it up and donate stuff and do all that kind of stuff. But also to get the painting of the Whispering Man. He does find it in her attic. He takes it back to his place where he lives with his brother. And he hangs it up on his wall. From there... The painting starts to affect not only his dreams, but his overall attitude. And that's kind of where I'm going to leave it. Now, this is a really cool cover, and it had me really wanting to check this out. You don't see anything like that in the film. That's my first con right there. The old bait and switch. <clears throat> now, if there was something similar or better then the bait and switch kind of doesn't make that much of a difference. But in this, the head the head kind of looks like the painting of the Whispering Man, but eh, not so much. I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain. It kind of looks like a an alien, I guess, from here. When the painting is just a little bit of a creepy picture of a painting of a guy's head. And it's all dark and atmospheric. Uh, second con. It is acted and the dialogue is re absolutely ridiculous. Now this tries to take what Paranormal Activity did fairly well. And go with the, the sparse occurrences in the house. Because 
after he has this painting and he hangs it up on his wall, he does hook up cameras to his house to see if there's anything that is happening that's going on, like the paranormal. And, of course, at nighttime when he's sleeping, you get the little, little teeny occurrences that happen gradually. So it's more or less a slow burn, very similar to Paranormal Activity and, I guess, Blair Witch, I guess. Um, to me, this one just didn't work for me. I don't really have a problem with found footage. <clears throat> Granted, it's not my favorite subgenre of horror, but if it's done right, it can be pretty effective. This kind of seemed like a carbon copy of Paranormal Activity, to be honest. And if you're going to do it, make the payoff something good. There is a payoff at the end, but I kind of saw it coming. And to be honest, by this point in the film, you kind of don't care anymore. Sad it is to say. I don't want to trash anybody's movie because I'm sure they put a lot of effort into this. I could see that they put a lot of effort and love into this film. And they did try. I get it. They tried. They had something they wanted to work with. They had a story that, while I still thought was a little underdeveloped, it was interesting to a certain degree. There is a story of the guy who um, painted the Whispering Man who mixed in his own blood with the oils in order to paint it. And I thought that was pretty cool. So it, it had some interesting scenes in the film. The makeup was actually not bad. The special effects weren't bad. You don't get many of them, but they weren't bad. But like I said, I think where this film fails is blatantly being a carbon copy paranormal activity so yeah um like i said this was a miss for me people who love found footage you may love this one it just wasn't for me and another special thank you to wild eye for sending me this copy and if you like what you see in here hit that like button and subscribe and until next time peace